Album retrati, l'ura pismi, l'ura pismi, paesi motivo, millina fi, millina fi, ti hape mio, la matrit, o che mi sti, impara il ftit, li erja da kismi, mi li erja da kismi, mi Lura t-tilat parti. Lura f-zmin. Mill-1967 il-Blueberry li baqet għaffondata baqet fil-iħ ta' Lake Coniston ġowa Lake District fil-Ingilterra. It-tellat. It-tellat u sar il-restaw. Xanna l-għu daqxej dak il-Sky News sejħulu l-Laughter Life tal-Bluebird K7. Loch Fad on the Isle of Bute in Scotland. There's been little to disturb the ancient stretch of water in 10,000 years. But that's about to change. miles from Butte in a workshop on Tyneside, a new life is about to begin for Bluebird K7. OK, we're ready to move this thing then. A team of volunteers have spent the best part of 20 years recovering the hydroplane's wreckage and putting her back together, piece by piece. Are we ready to go then? Johnny at the back? OK, straight back. I'll tell you when you can turn. She is precious cargo and they don't okay. want so much as a scratch on her paintwork. Johnny, who's scared as me, mate? Bluebird's life was once considered to be well and truly over. These engineers, divers and mechanics have taken her back from grave to cradle. But the jet boat seems to be listing, and nobody knows why, including project leader Bill Smith. Can it see for the life of me why it's at an angle, then? At this stage, Bill and his team simply can't afford any mistakes. So there's tension, but also excitement. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing's fun. It's all an adventure, you know, and you, the, uh, the challenges and the adventures get bigger and better. Tomorrow, Bluebird will set off on one of the biggest adventures of her life. It's the big day. The Bluebird team says she's had to be teased, coaxed and cajoled back to life. Now she's leaving the North Shields workshop where she has spent years in recovery. It's not every day you see such a creature on your commute. every day the local ferry carries such an exotic passenger. In her 1960s heyday, Bluebird was the envy of the world. Fired by an engine from a jet plane, she set seven world water speed records. Her pilot, Donald Campbell, was just as famous. To an adoring public, he was a glamorous hero of the age, on a par with rock stars. Indestructible Donald Campbell, survivor of the most spectacular crash in motoring history, is home again. But this star was desperate for another world record, and then another. And on a winter's day in the Lake District, in 1967, he pushed Bluebird too far. Donald Campbell died instantly. 
nobody then ever expected Bluebird to rise from the depths of that Cumbrian lake. For such a fabled guest, the arrival on Butte has prompted a special welcome. Carrying Donald Campbell's lucky mascot, Mr. Whoppet, his daughter Gina sees the rebuilt Bluebird for the first time. She was 17 when her father died. I'm blown away. And this makes me so humble that my dad was so brave and drove her so fantastically. She's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The Isle of Butte, with its population of little over 7,000, was a controversial choice for the relaunch. So the turnout has delighted the Bluebird team. This is outstanding, I love it. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And what thoughts are going through your mind after all this time? That or not sink. It's a special moment for everyone involved, but there's work to be done. team waste no time in getting her to the edge of Loch Fad, in readiness for her return to the water. But she seems reluctant. The listing that everyone noticed back in North Shields is happening again. As the crane lowers Bluebird little by little, the hoist jams. It's never happened before, and driver Duncan is puzzled as to how to fix it. After an anxious hour by the lakeside, the problem is solved. Bluebird is put to bed. They often refer to the machine as having a mind of her own. Certainly, she seems reluctant to go back to the water. I'm going to have thick gloves on, and I need to be able to slide it. Okay. The next morning, before Bluebird goes anywhere, pilots Ted Walsh and Stu Campbell go through a thorough safety briefing. Hopefully I'll be with you within seconds. I will be following you as close as I can at the boat. And as soon as you sink, crash, burn, whatever you're going to do, I will be on top of you like a, a rash. Ted, already an experienced hydroplane ace, and Stu, a former Red Arrows pilot, are no strangers to danger. But everyone is mindful of Bluebird's last outing on water 51 years ago. If catastrophe were to strike again, diver Sally Cartwright would be responsible for the rescue. I have to make sure these lads ain't going to drown. Well, about half an hour before they'll start to really feel the hypothermic effects. The panic is what I'm worried about as well, which can bring on. It's a very big responsibility. It's nerve-wracking. I'll be straight. I'm nervous. As the water beckons, Bluebird displays once again her apparent reluctance to go back to the water. To those who know the hydroplane best, this is typical of what they call the Campbell curse. There's one thing I've learned on this project is that, as it says on the back of a lot of our shirts, it'll fix. When she arrived at um, here Cottage at Coniston in 1966, she immediately got stuck in the mud. That's what they call Campbell luck. Poor old Donald always had bad luck, you know, it's, and it's just history repeating itself. After more than half a century of silence from Bluebird, nobody knows for sure how she'll respond on water. Will she even float? These are tense moments, but then... Fantastic. How cool is that? That's a lot of work bobbing around out there. And it better still hasn't sank yet. Were you nervous? No. I knew it would float for a while. It's carried on. I was never nervous. It was a bit of, come on, come on, come on, come on, you know. 
I think when the kids were born, come on, I want to see it. It was a bit like that. Uh, <laughs> it looks like somebody's making a movie about Campbell and they've left their prop lying in the bay. <laughs> That's what it looks like. And it's gone all through 1966 out there now. I'm a happy man, yeah. Well, the thing is, we've got to get it back out of the water now, and that's going to be just as fraught. So I'm a happy man till we start the next operation. By their own admission, Bill Smith and Gina Campbell have had an at times testy relationship. 100, 100 marks to you. Thank you. Out of how many? Out of 10. Oh, excellent. That's it. That's it. Only someone like you, bloody minded, difficult, argumentative, difficult, disagreeable. Disagreeable? Yes. That's it. That's yeah. from you, Gina. See, um, it's you. Ugly. Oh, it's lesser than ugly. We call us old next. <laughs> Could make this happen. <laughs> Onlookers are clearly mesmerised by the sight of this historic machine taking once more to the water. It's a fine sight, too, for those who were there when she was discovered 40 metres down on the bed of Coniston water. No question. If you're going to rebuild it, what excuse do you have to not put the engine in? And if you put the engine in, what's your excuse for not connecting it up? And if you connect it up, what's your excuse for not starting it? That's just a natural progression. So as soon as the idea was out there, let's rebuild it, then this was the inevitable conclusion. Loch Fad was chosen because of its long, straight stretch of water. The next step is to get Bluebird moving again at speed. Under study pilot Stu Campbell, no relation to Donald, tests out the engine as Bluebird continues her relaunch trials on the Isle of Bute in Scotland. It's a sound that nobody has heard since the January day in 1967 when Bluebird crashed. A sound that was silenced as she lay on the bed of Coniston water for 34 years waiting for that day when she would rise again. Now it's time for her first proper run since then. Chief pilot Ted Walsh takes over and is alone with his thoughts. History shows that it's got a certain edge to it and um, if you push it too far, it'll bite you in the bum. Fatality is not the norm in powerboat racing, as it is in any motorsport, but it is, it is a, a feature of it. It's a new craft and a new new way of driving it so we those are uh, new things are always things to bear in mind and approach with caution more than anything else in her initial lower speed runs bluebird performs better than the team dared to expect there's jubilation all round Once it smoothed out and the spray died away and pushed a load more throttle in and it was, you know, we were pretty much close to planing at that point. So, um, yeah, fantastic. Well done. <laughs> well done. Absolutely magic. Well done. Made my heart tingle. Well done. Thank you. So, yeah, and from him. Pleasure. No. <laughs> and what did you think, Gina? Oh, magic. Magic. Did we ever think this day would happen? It's an emotional moment, too, for the team of volunteers who spent so long rebuilding Bluebird. Absolutely stunning. We've all done parts on it, we've well worked on it, and to see it back on the water, especially under its own power, uh, it was absolutely brilliant. In a funny kind of way, I mean, it seems to me it's, you're almost travelling back in time because you're seeing what people saw back then. I never got to see that, so this is you know, the greatest part of it. I wasn't live, I was minus 13 at that point. I was even in the planning stage, so to see it for real is, you know, really, really special. In the workshop, she's fought us every inch of the way, and when we got her back here and decided to take her out onto the, onto the lock for the first time, it was as though she was, she was saying, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I remember what happened the last time, don't make me do it. But we took her, forced her, maybe a little gently, the sun came out, the loch sparkled, 
and uh, she just did some gentle pirouettes and, and said to us all, look at me, I'm back. Congratulations. Bill Smith's family have lived and breathed Bluebird for years. Blessed it, it was please let it float, please let it float, because you think of all the work that's gone in it and think please, and then today when they start the engine thinking please let this go right, and then when they took it out I was thinking please, just please let it work, and when it started to move I was like, it's moving! <laughs> and from team leader Bill Smith, another enthusiastic response. How, how do you describe now it? Now I'm excited, <laughs> now I'm excited. That was... Uh, it just works. How the hell did that happen? Ten years of building something that works, that never happens. But the next run, at speed, reminds everyone that although Bluebird has a certain majesty, there's also an ever-present danger. At a speed of over 150 miles an hour, Bluebird's canopy is torn off, flying 100 feet into the air. Pilot's response is characteristically phlegmatic. When we throttled off at the appropriate point, then it all, all hell broke loose. It just upsets you as a driver when something sudden like that happens, and you have to try and uh, assimilate the situation, basically. Only Donald Campbell would have known exactly what Ted Walsh was feeling now. You're out of touch, my baby. My old-fashioned but changing times had put Campbell under even greater stress. Seismic events were shaping a new world as Donald Campbell was preparing for what would be his final record-breaking run. The pressure was building up for the speed ace. He had been the toast of 1950 society, but seemed out of step with the less reverential spirit of the 60s. took off again and did that, uh, I think, three more times before finally coming down sideways on. He'd been thinking about quitting, but he couldn't. Yards. And then there was his superstition. He had all sorts of wee things and traditions and things, never wish him good luck because that was bad luck. And, you know, don't all the obvious things. He had a thing about the colour green. He believed in the supernatural. He believed in his father's presence. Gina feels that on more than one occasion, her father's spirit is present as the reborn bluebird prepares for her last high-speed runs on Lockfire. For those who witnessed Donald Campbell's crash, old memories are stirred. We walked over and it would take us a good hour, hour and a half to walk, to walk across the woods. And then we sat, we just got a clearing and sat there and, uh, and watched and waited. It was the speed, I think, we wanted to see it flying, virtually flying. And it did, it, it did fly. It did get a move on. And that's, that was the excitement. We just knew there was an accident, never thought of anybody being killed or anything. It just, it just, it just flipped over and you just, mostly you just saw splashes and, uh, and then it just disappeared. Also paying homage are spectators whose presence reflects Bluebird's international appeal. Living in Melbourne at the moment, and I've come to see this. Well, I remember the original event, so oh, it's nostalgia, I suppose, as much as anything. But uh, it was spectacular uh, to see it run for the first time. It's the last day of Bluebird's high-speed runs. With her smashed canopy replaced, she is back to her best. On the lock, there seems an ever-present spirit of the life that Bluebird left behind. They insist that she is far more than just a machine. Sometimes you can't dispel the feeling that a machine has some sort of soul, some sort of... I don't know, it, it's indefinable. But, you know, you, you work with that boat for long enough and she comes across, I was boats or was a she, as being a malevolent, bad-tempered old witch of a thing, you know? 
And you just can't shake that. It just, that's how it feels a lot of the time, that she just plain doesn't like you. I suppose I went through a stage when I hated her. She'd taken my dad away. But now seeing her reborn, oh, I can't take my eyes off her. She's, she, is it magnetism that she's got? And I don't think it's just me that feels it. I've seen thousands this week just sit there, grown men crying with emotion. And how can a machine do that? It's just, you know, I'm starting to sort of fill up thinking about it. She's beautiful. Bluebird is about to face one last big test, a double run up the lake and back. On her return, there's tension in the air as she comes closer to the shoreline and suddenly shifts closer still. Was this meant to happen? It releases some nervous energy. I said, oh my God, he's on one side. <laughs> Well, yeah. I've aged a bit. <laughs> I'm only 38. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> I was ready to hide behind that caravan, me. I thought I'm going behind this caravan, me. Can we ask for no profanity, no swearing? At the safety debrief, there's an altogether more serious atmosphere. I thought that was entirely unnecessary. That was far too leery. You should have shut it down sooner. Didn't see the need to come in the way you did. We haven't worked our lives the way. Project leader puts it down to a stressful um, week. The team, everybody from launch to recovery, the maintenance, to putting the tent up, the taking it down, the blowing air, the fetching and carrying fuel, the whole lot, have been absolutely outstanding and fantastic, and it's my privilege to, to work with everybody here. So I think the time has come that we say, right, we stop. No more fast runs, we've proved the point, we're on a high, the last one was exciting, to say the least. Um, no harm done. Let's walk away. We can do some slow speed taxis, a bit of floating for the cameras, maybe just standing engine run. But what we need now is a bigger leg. Let's walk away on a high. There's still talk of Bluebird going back one day to what people call her spiritual home, the lake in Coniston where tragedy struck. Yes, people say she'll go to Coniston, but Coniston simply has nothing in place to facilitate this, despite a decade to get it ready. And that is, that's tragic. It shouldn't have happened that way. So what now for the legend? By common consent, she's certainly not ready for the museum just yet. Her appeal as a piece of British history is beyond question. She has risen from the dark, from the wreckage she became, back to the spirit she was born to be. The afterlife of Bluebird K7. Sabiha Kukul. Yahasra. اللي نتلفو نيس بحال داو برو نقبو نوزو الميموري والكاباتشيتاية تتاحهم احنا وصلنا فلاحة تا برغرامي هون لورا في زمين فكركم لنرجع ونكونو معكم الجمعة الديهلا الجمعة الديهلا عنا شهاجة بارتيكولاري مربوطة ما مالتا شهاجة لسقور هي ما قلب in Maltin. So come there, John, and tell Margaret, Yen, Flipkin, Maltin, Kollu, Tal Produzioni, is Almu. Oh, 
Dark is mean, 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 mean,